Hi, I'm Claudia Chase from Murex Looms. Welcome to our stop on the Tapestry Unlimited blog tour. Our lesson on the tour is all about making shapes. The first shape we're going to make is a triangle, then a square, and then the hardest shape of all, a circle. To begin weaving my triangle, I'm going to be inserting three wefts. Two are the background wefts, they're the same color, and this is the triangle weft. I am going to be inserting my wefts going in opposite directions. The reason one does this is, as I decrease my triangle shape, I will be increasing my outside colors, and they need to be in the correct relationship, in the correct shed in relationship to the triangle. You'll see what I mean as, as I weave, but this is a very important concept, weaving in opposite directions. So my first weft was, is going from left to right. When I insert my triangle weft, and notice I do not take the color past the marker threads. When I insert my triangle weft, it's going to go from right to left. Again, I'm not going past that red marker, which is very helpful, is, is showing me where to begin and end. And then this last weft will be going in the opposite direction of the, the triangle weft. In other words, from left to right. So here we have our First weft is going from left to right. Our triangle weft is going from right to left. And our final one is going from left to right. So I am decreasing by one warp thread at a time. So I'm moving over one warp thread every time I've built up, up two passes around. So here I have two passes right here. And here I'm going to go around this one one more time. And then I'm going to decrease it by one warp thread. So I'm going to come to this one. And I will keep doing that. I do want to point out, too, that my triangle uh, covers an odd number of warps. So it actually will come to a, a sharp point going around just one warp thread at the end. Now I'm going to fill in a little bit with the outside threads. Remember that, again, we want to build up two uh, turns around a warp thread at a time. So I'm going to weave this one and then this one. You see here I have two and that makes two going that way. Now, I already have two around this warp thread. When I change the shed, I am going to increase. I'm going to move over by one warp thread. And I hope you can see this, but because we're in the proper shed in relationship to one another, that green thread actually went under that warp, and the yellow one is going over it. So they will mush down really nicely together and have a make a nice little join there. You can see when you when you build up these shapes separately, it's clear. Um, it's probably a little more time consuming because you have to change the shed more frequently versus you know weaving all three, changing the shed and weaving all three. But I think for someone who's never woven a triangle before, this is probably the best way to see it clearly. I am going to just continue weaving. I'm going to build up my triangle and then I that's it, decreasing and then I will fill in with my increasing wefts and I'm just going to do it until we're done. I've ended the triangle thread. And now I'm going to weave this one toward, remember the triangle thread goes in that direction, it's going right to left. I'm going to weave this toward my triangle thread. I'm going to place it in back. And by doing that, when I change sheds, this one will be in the correct relationship to both the triangle and the other background color thread. And when I weave that over, it will be in the correct shed. So I ended two of them by weaving them toward each other, and then I took the third one in the next shed and wove it over 
both of them. The next shape we are going to weave is a square, which is obviously a version of a rectangle, so you can use this to weave both a square and a rectangle. The technique we are going to employ is slit tapestry, which means there will be a slit in between the shape itself and the background wefts. Because there will be a slit, the line will be very, very even and straight versus if you did warp interlock where you're wrapping your weft threads around the warp every other time in between or weft interlock where the wefts themselves are actually connecting in between the warp threads. As I did with the triangle, I will be inserting my wefts going in opposite directions. I'm going to take one of my background wefts and I'm going to take it to the marker, not past it. I'm going to insert the weft that makes my square. I'm going to stick its tail where the other marker is. See, they're in the same place. And then be sure not to take it past that marker. And then I am going to insert my side weft right there. Chain sheds. And this is so much simpler than the triangle. You just have to make sure that you do not go past the um, marker weft. Let's see what we have here. Let's pull out our markers. See, we have a slit here and we have a slit there. And we're just going to keep weaving until our square is a square. I now am sufficiently squared. The one thing I want to point out to you, which is extremely important, is how when I went around the warp threads between the square and the other, well, which is essentially a square as well, I treated it the way you treat your side warp threads. It's not baggy, there are no loops there, but it's not tight and it's not pulling in. It should be as straight a line as possible, so you get this effect. See, if I put my hand there, you can't even tell that there's really a slit there. You can sew that slit up later, but for a short distance like this, you can see where you might not even have to. I'm now going to end this, these two weft threads, trim them off, stick them behind, they're gone. And because I wove my wefts in opposite directions, now I can change the shed and weave over both of those colors with my right weft and everything will be in the correct shed. The final shape we're going to do is a circle. When weaving a circle, unlike weaving a triangle or a square, you really need to mark your warps. If you don't mark your warps, I promise you, you're probably going to come up with something that looks like an egg. What I did here is I cut out uh, a circle from a piece of paper. I placed it in the shed between the, two, the warps. I actually changed the shed, put the, the circle in there so to hold it in place. I am now marking my warp threads around the edge of the circle. See when I remove it, there is a perfect circle inside there. My background color is going to be a light green and I'm going to weave that until I get to the very bottom of the circle. From this point on it's kind of like coloring in a coloring book. Here we have our black markings for the circle and we want to fill in our background wefts until we get to this point because those are decreasing wefts. We will then fill in our circle and then we will complete filling in our background wefts to cover the circle. What we want to do is pretty much make sure there's only a little tiny bit of this black marking showing when we start filling in our background wefts. What I've done to clarify where I want to take these wefts to is I put two marker wefts there. Those are um, two marker pieces of yarn there. First I'm going to weave 
this weft over to that background marker. And I'm going to weave this weft in the same direction. And the reason is, once I insert my circle weft, I want it to be going in the opposite direction of these two wefts. So the circle weft will be going in that direction. If you look at what your head says, your head would never have started this with a straight line on the bottom. Your head would have started it with a point. And that's why it's so crucial that you really look at those markings to make sure that you are following them, not what your mind says you should follow. Now you've seen we've woven in our background wefts. And just like there's a straight line on the bottom, you can see that there's a straight line here too. Your mind wants the circle to start with points, but it doesn't. It starts with straight lines because remember, this is a grid. Now we've woven these two wefts already in this shed that we're in, and we're going to insert our circle weft going in the opposite direction. And now all those wefts will be in the correct relationship to one another in the shed. And we are going to start filling in the circle. Okay, I'm going to end this background thread. See, I've filled in both the background colors. I'm going to end this, and I'm going to end the circle thread. And now everything is in the same shed, and when I change the shed, I will be able to weave this one over everything, and it will be in the correct relationship. Okay, this is my circle. Remember, the most important thing is to weave inside the lines, not weave what your mind says you want to weave, because you will have points on the top and bottom and the left and right. The other thing is that the finer you're set, the more capable you are of making something that looks like a circle. For example, this is nine ends per inch. If it were four ends per inch, it would be very steppy. It would step up very much on the sides, and it would be a very blocky looking circle. So I hope you're very successful in your circle weaving. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something about building shapes and tapestry. I had a lot of fun teaching you. And remember, please join the American Tapestry Alliance. They are a wonderful organization.